Miguel, the renowned showman of the capital, hosted a popular weekly show where distinguished guests engaged in sensational conversations over coffee, approaching 30, he exuded the aura of a dandy, his slick black hair tied in a ponytail at the nape of his neck, he indulged himself in every aspect of life on that sunny day rushing to a shoot, Miguel suddenly realized there were no cigarettes left in the glove compartment, hastily pulling up at the supermarket, he carelessly left his fashionable red car by the roadside and entered through the sliding glass doors inside he found only a lone wrinkled old woman at the cashier's counter her hand trembling as she held a bun conversing with paula the cashier miguel impatiently checked his smartphone as he stood behind the old woman in line grandma i'm sorry i just can't paula's voice rang out drawing miguel's attention irritably glancing at his expensive watch miguel couldn't help but feel time slipping away inexorably grandma i would help, but I'm not allowed to," Paula replied impassively, her curls seeming to sway in a negative gesture, it was evident that Paula wished to expedite the process, but didn't know how to handle the situation, the grandmother, determined not to give in, stood her ground, impulsively, Miguel intervened in his usual showman manner, pulling out a large bill from his pocket, he casually threw it on the counter, instructing Paula to let the grandma take whatever she needed and to give him the pack of cigarettes he desired, the old woman seemed bewildered by the sudden turn of events, while Paula looked at Miguel with a mix of gratitude and puzzlement, snatching the pack of cigarettes, Miguel hastily made his exit, oblivious to the gaze of a slender girl in a red dress with black polka dots, standing pensively at the supermarket entrance, ten days later, Miguel discovered a strange bluish envelope on his windshield, running late for a shoot, he grabbed the envelope and tossed it onto the dashboard, forgetting about it until the end of the workday, when he finally opened it, he found a quadruple folded sheet of time yellowed paper, realizing it wasn't a fine as he initially thought, he couldn't fathom the reason behind the frantic pounding in his chest, perhaps it was the paper itself or the elusive scent it carried, triggering memories long forgotten, with trembling hands, he unfolded the sheet, only to have it slip onto his lap under the weight of overwhelming emotions, what? lay before him was so unexpected, so shocking, that Miguel sat frozen, unable to move for what felt like an eternity, voices and images from the past assaulted his mind, chaotic and relentless, he tried to push them away, to bury them deep within like old belongings in a closet, but they resurfaced with even greater intensity, vivid and terrifying, after what seemed like an eternity, Miguel finally let out a long exhale and, with shaking hands, picked up the sheet once more, no, it wasn't a mistake, and what he saw wasn't a figment of his imagination, the drawing depicted a wooden construction resembling a marionette doll, with the inscription, Jorge, above it, accompanied by signatures in a painfully familiar handwriting, there was no mistaking it, only one person in the world wrote like that, and he was no longer alive, beside the drawing, someone had crudely sketched a map of unfamiliar terrain, with a cross in the middle, a rush of realization flooded Miguel's mind, a pirate treasure map, he reached for his cigarettes, nervously lighting one without bothering to open the window, lost in his thoughts, he failed to notice the ashes falling onto his trousers and suede shoes, in that moment, Miguel was transported far away, he saw a simple wooden house, a fence with a gate, and heard the cries of roosters at dawn, but then reality came crashing back, scheduled shoots awaited him the next morning, he needed to go home, to sleep, to wake up to another day in the life of a successful showman pulling out his smartphone, Miguel dialed Carla's number, a young model he had recently met, hey Miguel, sorry, we can't meet today, she chirped, I'm stuck at a reception with everyone from actors to directors, I can't get away, sorry, the man didn't respond, ending the call silently, Carla's voice, once delightful, now grated on his nerves, sounding artificial and hollow, his hand reached for the glove compartment, rummaging until he found a rough wooden box, opening it, he revealed a wooden ladybug he had carved as a child, tears unexpectedly welling up in his eyes, Miguel couldn't remember the last time he had cried, over the years, his heart had been encased in a thick armor, but now, a faint inner voice whispered that it couldn't continue like this, Miguel was determined to uncover the mystery behind the strange envelope, a message from the past, starting the engine, he set off without hesitation, initially, he considered swinging by home to grab a few things. But as hands guided the car onto the road leading out of the city, he realized it was for the best, he might change his mind if he hesitated, the entire night was spent on the road until Miguel reached the tiny town, 
more of a village. At dawn, memories flooded his mind with clarity and vividness as he recalled his childhood and youth, running to the pond to watch fat red carp, his grandmother buying him mint ice cream, memories that brought both joy and pain, especially thoughts of his grandfather focusing on the road. Miguel drove past unchanged buildings, landmarks of his past, stopping at a gas station to refuel, he encountered a familiar face behind the counter, Alba, she seemed familiar, and Miguel remembered her as a five-year-old girl, although she didn't recognize him, her warmth and hospitality stirred nostalgia within him, thanking Alba, Miguel refreshed himself with coffee and a snack before continuing his journey, with the destination not far ahead, he drove in. Silence, the road of familiar companion, it seemed time had stood still in this corner of the earth, unchanged by the passage of years, arriving at a narrow, winding alley, Miguel parked by a gate painted in bright red, behind the fence stood an old, two-story house, its pink shades slightly faded and dirty, reluctant to look around, Miguel's gaze betrayed him, scanning the street where everything remained unchanged, except for an empty gap where a neighboring house should have been, coughing, Miguel caught a whiff of smoke, reminiscent of the haunting scent from his painful memories, though the fire had been extinguished long ago, the smell lingered, a reminder of past trauma, feeling dizzy, Miguel took deep breaths, a coping mechanism he had learned from his countless sessions with psychiatrists approaching the red gate, Miguel stood close enough to touch its cracked surface, his heart pounding with anticipation and apprehension, countless times had Miguel opened this gate in his dreams, but now, facing it in reality, he couldn't forgive his own cowardice, with determination, he pulled the handle, but the gate remained locked, ringing the bell, he was surprised to find it untouched by time, its sound echoing in the clear air, yet there was no answer, the house stood still, as if frozen in time, unsettling Miguel, what if all of this was still just a dream, remembering the early hour, he observed the well-kept windows and flowers on the sills, reassured that the house was inhabited, returning to the car, he avoided looking at the frightening gap between the houses and closed his eyes, falling into an uneasy sleep in his dream, a girl from his childhood stood by the open red gate, waving at him, before Miguel woke abruptly to the sound of his ringing phone, it was Claudia, his faithful assistant, calling about the morning show, without the strength or desire to explain, Miguel turned off the phone, feeling defeated as if in response to his thoughts, the red gate swung open, revealing a woman in her fifties with a woven basket. A familiar sight from Miguel's childhood, with trembling hands, he approached her, and they embraced tightly, Aunt Marta, he whispered, as she discreetly wiped tears from her eyes, they stood there in silence before Marta invited him inside, offering to make breakfast, declining the offer, Miguel opted to sit in the kitchen as Marta busied herself, the familiar scent of vanilla and oranges filled the house, evoking memories of Laura his childhood friend, even amidst the chaos of their adventures, her scent remained constant, a comforting presence, Miguel couldn't help but reminisce about simpler times as Marta bustled around the kitchen, preparing breakfast, the man involuntarily glanced up to where the girl's room used to be, his gaze caught by Marta, Laura doesn't live here anymore, she said, her words devoid of emotion, Miguel couldn't decipher her tone, was it disappointment, resignation, or deep sadness, he dared not ask, fearing the answer might bring painful memories. Perhaps Laura had long been married, a thought that clenched Miguel's heart painfully, leading him to the kitchen, Marta sat Miguel down at the table, the others are still asleep, she mentioned, the boys have school at 12, and Lise hasn't been working for a long time, Miguel found himself at a round table covered with a familiar lace tablecloth, a relic from childhood knitted by Marta's mother, memories washed over him warm yet tinged with bitterness and guilt as Marta continued speaking. Carefully avoiding his gaze, Miguel felt a sense of isolation, no one will disturb you, Marta assured him or bother you with questions and conversations, the coffee is still hot, sugar on the table, cream in the fridge, I'll be back soon, with those words, she left Miguel alone with his past, quietly inhaling the scent of vanilla, Miguel allowed himself to be consumed by memories, he had lived nearby when Marta's family moved in, taken in by his grandparents after his parents' death, his grandfather's workshop, where wooden dolls danced on strings, was a haven of creativity, Miguel recalled the crimson satin curtains his grandmother had sewn, drawn aside on weekends for puppet shows, Laura, Marta's eldest daughter, had often attended these shows, quiet and shy, she had initially escaped Miguel's notice, however, 
Grandpa's invitation to Laura into the workshop piqued Miguel's curiosity, observing Laura, he discovered a fellow bookworm, their shared love for literature bridging. The gap between them, following Laura to the city library one day, Miguel offered to help carry her stack of books, her emerald eyes met his, and Miguel sensed a newfound trust between them, gratefully nodding, Laura handed Miguel the stack of books, marking the beginning of their friendship, from that day forward, Miguel waited for Laura every morning at the Red Gate to walk to school together, as they strolled along the streets, they hardly spoke, content in each other's company, Miguel found. Solace in watching the morning sunbeams dance through Laura's dark brown hair, illuminating it with a golden hue, though he longed to touch her hair, he restrained himself, not daring to breach the boundary of their friendship, one noon, as they returned home from school, Grandpa called to them from the workshop window, promising a surprise, rushing to the workshop, Miguel and Laura were delighted to receive wooden boxes from Grandpa, each containing tiny unpainted ladybugs, eagerly picking up brushes, they set to work, transforming the wooden insects into vibrant creations, their visits to Grandpa's workshop became frequent, with Laura particularly drawn to a fair-haired, blue-eyed doll named Lucia, sensing Laura's attachment, Grandpa gifted Lucia to her, prompting her to confess that Lucia felt lonely, moved by her honesty, Grandpa and Miguel conspired to create a friend for Lucia, involving Laura in the design process, blushing with excitement, Laura named the new doll Jorge, and, Together they watched as Jorge came to life under Grandpa's skilled hands, their idyllic memories were interrupted by a noise, and Miguel looked up to see a boy of about fifteen descending the stairs, his gaze intense, recognizing him as Manuel, Laura's brother, Miguel introduced himself as a longtime family friend, Manuel, a man of few words, nodded in acknowledgement, directing Miguel's attention to the wall adorned with hand-drawn maps, approaching the wall, Miguel was struck by the realization that, Laura shared Manuel's love for maps, Manuel explained that Laura had sparked his interest in pirate treasures by giving him a book, setting off his fascination with maps, Miguel's heart swelled with nostalgia, as Manuel's words evoked yet another cherished memory, around the same time Grandpa began crafting Jorge, Miguel awaited Laura at the Red Gate as usual, when she appeared, her eyes gleamed mysteriously, we're not going to school today, she announced, surprised, Miguel inquired, and Laura, whispered, we'll be reading a book, intrigued by Laura's secretive tone, Miguel eagerly anticipated the adventure ahead, though not much of a book lover himself, there was something in Laura's voice that piqued his curiosity, together, they sneaked away to the lake, where Laura unveiled sandwiches and a flask of hot chocolate from her bag, pulling out the book, Miguel's excitement surged, pirate stories awaited them, throughout the day, they immersed themselves in the tales of adventure, later, Constructing a makeshift pirate ship from found scraps on the shore, discovered by Miguel's grandfather, they faced a stern scolding, but the memory of their serene, warm day remained untouched by reprimand, lost in reminiscence, Miguel was interrupted by Martha's voice behind him as she unpacked groceries at the table, Manuel, seated nearby, mumbled in response, Miguel acknowledged Martha's comment about Manuel's hobby, but his mind raced elsewhere, haunted by a scribble on a yellow sheet of paper, excusing himself hastily, Miguel retreated to the car, seeking the elusive drawing from the restless night before, amidst the search, the smell of burning seeped into his consciousness, triggering a wave of disorientation, as visions of the past flooded his mind, Miguel struggled to resist their grip, in his recollection, he found himself walking home alone on the day Laura fell ill, unable to accompany her due to a class test, the memory weighed heavily, mingling with the present turmoil, Burying his face in his hands, Miguel sought solace in deep breaths, but the visions persisted, relentless in their hold on his consciousness, amidst the chaos of memories and present reality, Miguel fought to find clarity and peace, already sensing that something was amiss, Miguel noticed the anxious chatter and pointed fingers as smoke billowed above the rooftops, the word, fire, echoed through the air, but the danger didn't register until familiar faces, neighbors, raced past, their shouts blending into a cacophony, finding himself enveloped in his grandfather's strong embrace, Miguel's tears flowed freely, the loss of their cozy home, filled with cherished memories, weighed heavily on his heart, amidst the chaos, a single thought pierced his mind, what about Jorge, with a desperate cry, Miguel's voice cut through the noise, reaching his grandfather's ears, ignoring the danger, his grandfather rushed into the burning workshop in search of Jorge, the puppet that had brought joy to, 
Many children, minutes passed like eternity as Miguel anxiously waited, his heart pounding with fear and hope, but as the roof collapsed and his grandmother's wail pierced the air, Miguel's world shattered, waking from the haze of memories, Miguel found himself in Marta's car, her worried face peering at him, explaining that he had fallen asleep, Miguel's gaze fell on a drawing of Jorge tucked between the seats, unfolding it carefully, he showed it to Marta, a silent reminder of their shared loss and longing, this is a doll sketch made by grandpa, and these scribbles. I don't remember, Marta scrutinized the drawing, her brow furrowed in confusion, this is Laura's handwriting, she finally said, she was also obsessed with treasure hunts and pirate treasures, you know better than me, Miguel nodded, realizing Marta likely wouldn't have the answers to his questions, but how did grandpa's drawing end up with her, and why did she draw a map on it, he wondered aloud, Marta shook her head tears welling in her eyes, you know Laura hardly ever spoke, she always kept everything to herself, she said, her voice trembling, maybe I did something wrong, maybe I'm a bad mother, am I, Miguelito, opening his arms, Miguel embraced Marta, letting her cry, where is she now, he finally dared to ask, she lives in the capital, she rarely comes home, calls once a week, but mostly just to stay silent on the phone, Marta replied, her voice heavy with sadness, as she met anyone, gotten married, Miguel asked, his heart pounding with anticipation, Marta shook her head, I think. There's no lonelier soul in the city than our Laura, and it saddens me deeply, she confessed, tears streaming down her cheeks, but Miguel felt a sudden lightness in his heart, I want to see her, Marta, please give me Laura's address, driving confidently through the fading day, Miguel knew he needed Laura now more than ever, arriving home, he quickly showered and changed, ignoring the unanswered messages on the answering machine. With determination, he got back behind the wheel, Marta's address. Entered into the navigator, Laura lived in the southern part of the city, nestled among tiny cottages on the hillside, Miguel smiled, knowing Laura would choose a quiet, secluded spot even in the bustling capital, finding house number 17, Miguel's heart quickened as he climbed the porch steps, ringing the doorbell, he waited anxiously, but the silence that followed refused to be disturbed, glancing at his watch, he realized it was late, where could Laura be, as he turned to leave, something caught. His eye, a familiar blue corner peeking from the door's gap, pulling it out, Miguel found an envelope, identical to the one with his grandfather's drawing, impatiently, Miguel tore open the envelope and extracted the piece of paper inside, his eyes swiftly scanned the familiar handwriting, and a burst of laughter escaped his lips as he read aloud, find me at our spot, Miguel couldn't contain his amusement, are you serious? he exclaimed, the laughter bubbling up from deep within him, it was the best joke he had heard in a long time, with newfound energy coursing through him, Miguel dashed to the nearest cafe, grabbing a double espresso to fuel his excitement, setting off on the road back, he made several stops for more coffee and even nodded off briefly in a parking lot, as dawn broke, Miguel found himself back at the lake, where a bright orange tent caught his eye amidst the remnants of a campfire, rushing to the nearest supermarket, Miguel gathered provisions for breakfast before returning to the lake, within minutes, a stirring from the tent signaled someone's awakening, Miguel fervently hoped it was Laura inside and not some unexpected stranger, his heart skipped a beat as a delicate hand reached for the tent zipper, and Miguel's relief was palpable as Laura emerged, with tears welling in her eyes, she looked at Miguel in astonishment, as if unable to believe he had actually come, hello, Laura, Miguel greeted her softly, his voice filled with warmth, she didn't utter a word but simply smiled in response, Miguel knew the significance of that smile, it spoke volumes, approaching her, Miguel enveloped Laura in a tight hug, feeling her fragile body press against his, as she wept, Miguel couldn't help but wonder why, why are you crying, my dear, he asked gently, I'm here with you, Jorge, Laura whispered through her tears, her voice barely above a whisper, Miguel's heart clenched at the mention of the doll, it's my fault, Laura confessed, her voice trembling with guilt. Miguel listened intently as she revealed her secret, her confession weighing heavy on his heart, for a moment, Miguel felt as though the ground had shifted beneath him, Laura's words echoed in his mind, and he struggled to comprehend the magnitude of what she had just revealed, but as Laura stroked his hair, a sense of peace washed over Miguel, he realized that forgiveness was within reach, not just for Laura but for himself as well, in that moment, surrounded by the scent of vanilla and oranges. Miguel found solace in Laura's embrace, together, they shared breakfast by the fire, their laughter mingling with the crackle of flames, and as they unearthed Jorge from his makeshift grave, 
Miguel felt a weight lift from his shoulders, with Laura by his side, he knew he could face whatever challenges lay ahead, as they packed up to leave, Miguel turned to Laura with a smile, I've been running away from myself for too long, he admitted, but now, thanks to you, I've found my way back, Laura returned. His smile, her eyes sparkling with unspoken gratitude, and I'm glad you did, she whispered, her voice filled with love, together, they walked away from the lake, their hearts lighter than they had been in years, and as they embarked on a new chapter of their lives, Miguel knew that with Laura by his side, anything was possible. If you enjoyed this story, be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next. Heartwarming Story